Hello, welcome back to my little channel. I do hope you're all well. I'm very well, but if I look even more tired than usual, then you'd be correct and very observant in working that out. I am house sitting in a lovely house near Cobham again, and they have Sky TV and Sky Movies, which I do not have, I've never had. So what, do, what does someone who's got 12 and a half hour shift do? before their shift, watches three films. And then what do they do when they get back from their shift? Watch another two films. Why not? Me. <laughs> so, so far here I've watched, let's have a think, To Leslie, which is really good. Andrea Riseborough, woman who wins the lottery, loses it, then comes back to her roots. All goes tits up as it does. But anyway, that's, it's, it's a good film. Um, oh, Captain Phillips. Oh, what was the other one? Mean Girls the Musical, quite good actually, quite fun. I watched that for the second time actually. Oh my gosh, something about the swimming pool or mid midnight pool, midnight swim. I fell asleep actually in that one, but it was quite good. What was the other one? Oh, Madam Web, so about a spider woman kind of thing with a, with a bad spider man, if that makes any sense. Dakota, what's her name? Melanie Griffiths' daughter. Dakota Johnson. Anyway, quite fun. Yeah, just had a rubbish little joke come to mind. Um, I was dusting off my book collection earlier on and all the books fell on my head. <laughs> I mean, I'm the clumsiest fool in the world, but um, the books all fell on my head and I only have my shelf to blame. Ha uh ha. -huh. So unfunny, isn't it? Anyway, before I get into the little hall, and it's a little tiny hall from both Glasgow, Glasgow, and uh, well, I was about to say Minehead. What, what on earth is going on in my head? I was thinking Gateshead, not Gateshead. I did pop into Gateshead though. Um, oh my gosh, I was about to say Sheffield. I'm so weird, aren't I? I should edit that out, but it is what it is. Newcastle. Honestly, when you're driving around, you're these place names, and it just, and then you look back at your footage, and you know, it's, it's in there. Anyway, got me a little Shakespeare quote. And it's a rather lovely quote, actually. It's one that's misconstrued, but in a good way. It's um, for a good reason. If that makes any sense whatsoever. So the quote is, shall I use that one? Oh, I'll use that one next time. I've got quite a few, actually, to be fair. So this is from Henry V, which is quite a heavy play. I'm not going to lie and say I've read it, or read, read it in its entirety. I have not. I've looked at various monologues, I've read about the themes, I've researched a little bit, just little bits here and there. But I love this quote. It's quite poignant and quite relevant and for, for life these days, if you don't understand it properly. As far as I, I, I might even be getting it wrong myself, but I, I have thought I interpret it a certain way, which I think others do, and then I'll give you the actual meaning. But the quote is Self love, my liege, is not so vile a sin as self neglecting. So I think most of us take that to mean, you know, vanity and really doing doling yourself up and being very into your looks and very into you and me 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 and spoiling yourself and, and spending money on yourself and treating yourself and just giving yourself an easy life all the time is um it's fine but um it's not quite as bad even if you're over the top spend hundreds of pounds on your appearance every week it's not quite as bad as being a mess or not looking after yourself not taking care of yourself and your needs and that can be beauty, makeup, hair, food, diet, just general treats, holidays, you know, indulging all your whims and fancies. But actually, so I'm just going to try and get this right and interpret this properly for you. That is how I've always taken it. And I think others do as well, because it is a good message, isn't it? It's, it's like self-love, you know, you can go too far and it's all about me, 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 and you've got to think of others, but it's not quite as bad as totally neglecting yourself and letting yourself go to waste, because it's only you that is going to bring up the best in you. Oh, the blood and dry is going off. Ignore that, please. Very loud, even though it's quite far away. But um, that is a, quite a good modern interpretation, I think, when you can interpret it that way. But really, I'll, I'll read the little blurb. The Dauphin, is that how you pronounce it? is addressing his father here, encourage him 
encouraging him to respond forcefully to the English ambassador who had brought the message that Henry regards himself, blah, 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 all that kind of thing. But basically, by advocating self-love, the Dauphin is not suggesting the king like himself or have high self-regard. He's not suggesting that. Things we associate with self-love. But that he looked after his interests. He's encouraging his father to defend the crown against the English. Self-neglecting, which here would be failing to look after his interests, would supposedly be the greater sin. So it's, it's thinking of number one is better in a way and one's interests and being a bit over the top with that than totally going the other way and failing to look after it all. If that makes any sense, gosh, I've probably gone on and on and on. I will put a timestamp of when I've actually stopped blabbering on. But anyway, getting back to the little haul, and it's quite a little haul. It's not too much. I've just got a few bits and bobs. I really didn't want to come back laden with goodies. When you're young, I think you get somewhere, don't you? Like a school trip with your money, your little fiver in your hand. And instead of going around the museum or whatever, you want to go straight to the gift shop. Let's be honest, you want to go straight to the gift shop and blow that money even with a bit of crap, a bit of plastic that you chuck on your fridge, a postcard or two, a pencil with like an outline of a train or something in plastic. I think we, we've all been there. And then we all we gather this crap and then one day you go into your junk drawer in your kitchen and you're like, it come, comes out with loads of dust in it. And you're like, that's where that pencil with the plastic train went. And do you remember those pens you could get that had sort of liquid in? And they had like a train or a boat and you shook it and put it that way, put it that way. And the boat would sort of chug along in the pen or the pencil. I just, not pencil, pen. I used to spend like 3 dollars on those. Anyway, getting back to all. So these are the items I purchased. The first one is from my mother, which I've had for a, since I've been back actually. And this has done so well. If you know me, you know that I like anything sweet on the whole, anything chocolatey, but I do, believe it or not, have things I hate in food, food-wise. I hate orange chocolate, I hate coffee chocolate, I hate um, marrow, I don't eat meat, but anyway, where are we going with this? So I don't like fudge, so I thought if I buy her something that I wouldn't touch and sneak and stuff my face with for a midnight feast, it'll last. So this would last years, because I bought a collection of Fudge. And I can't stand fudge. I don't know why. I just... Shut up. <laughs> the bloody dryer. I know you want to be emptied. I know. I've acknowledged that. Honestly. So this is a right mess. Been the bottom of one's bag. But it's a taste of Scotland fudge. And look look how mushed up it is already. But I've got Kaluti dumpling. Haven't got a clue what that is. Let's see on the back. Um, well, it's... But very sweet, it's got lots of, it's got it's buttery, it's got all sorts of tarnas. Oh, it's got sultanas in. It's interesting. So Kluti dumpling must be like a tea cake or something. Kluti tea cake? Kluti bun of some sort? Anyway, so Kluti dumpling, Kranakan, I am brew, and Highland toffee. I have no idea which Scottish dialect I'm trying to do. If you're Scottish, I do apologise. I've grown quite fond of all the various accents in Scotland recently, and I'm trying my best. But anyway, that is gift number one. Oh my God, it's £5.50 for that. Look, £5.50. Anyway, I haven't touched it because I do not like fudge. The next things are a little collection of iron brews. First of all, in their version of Poundland, a baby iron brew bottle. And this is 250ml, it's a bit less than that, oh it doesn't say, 250ml and that was 45p, I mean you can't go wrong can you, how cute is that, I mean who doesn't want a mouthful of orange flavoured sugar, orange coloured sugar liquid, you can't go wrong, I've actually lost my credit card and my debit card so I can't buy anything at the moment. I've had to cancel them, reorder just in case. Well, I think actually someone has run a bill. I'll tell you about that next time. In fact, I'll tell you about it after the haul. Um, but I can't get any Coke or Pepsi Max at the moment because I don't have any money, I don't have any cash, any cards until the cards come through. I'll have to go get money out of my ISA, I think. Anyway, 
where was I going with this? So I can't buy any other drinks. And then last night I was thinking, oh gosh, how am I going to manage? How will I do without Pepsi Max? They should be cutting down on anyway. Then I remembered I had three different types of iron brew, so all was saved. So I'll be very iron brewed out by roughly tomorrow night, Monday. Anyway, the next iron brew, I mean, how cool is this? Iron brew raspberry ripple. I haven't got a clue how sweet that's going to be. It's sugar free and it's going to be iron brew with raspberry. Or will it just be raspberry ripple? Or raspberry ripple flavour with a bit of iron brew? Who knows? I could open it right now, but I've just brushed my teeth because I had garlic. I had to brush them again. Oh, long story. The next one is iron brew wild. I thought it said wild berry sushi then. I haven't been drinking. Actually, that's a bit of a lie. I had very naughty. I pinched one of their ciders last night. I don't even really drink. But I didn't have, as I said, I didn't have any fizzy drink to hand. I completely forgot about these iron brews. And I thought, do I fancy something, a fizzy apple, a drink of some sort? And I thought, yes, I do. And I thought they have cider. It's a sweet, cloudy cider. Sweet apples. And I thought, Bob's your uncle, Fanny's your aunt. Enjoyed it very much, thank you. So this one is wild berry slush. I was about to say wild berry sushi again. So I, I, in my head it's gonna be like blueberry. I don't know why, I think wild berry would be like blueberry, but it'll be interesting, I think, to try that. I will try it when I brush my teeth, or oh, losing some of the items over here. The next thing I got, it's really random. <laughs> I went to Vicky, I can't say Vicky's Secret, I call it Vicky's Secret, Victoria's Secret. I got me a new perfume and this is Tease Creme Cloud and I sort of went in there and I I sound like somebody's really rich and re spoiled. I had loads of money to burn. I had a few minutes before my train from Glasgow Queen Street to Newcastle and I thought I just fancy buying something. I've never bought anything from Victoria's Secret. I haven't got any Victoria's Secrets anywhere near me. I thought I fancy a little cosmetic piece for my collection, maybe a perfume or a body mist. And I literally ran in there, tried about three, and I didn't have time to worry about it. My train time was approaching. And I thought, I have to admit, most of them I didn't like. They were too sweet for me, or too, like, young girl, sort of boudoir. And I wanted something with more maturity and less sweet and more creamy vanilla-esque undertones. And this did the job. And let's have a quick little sniff. You have to admit it doesn't smell pricey, it's not um, a high-end perfume but I love the size of it for the handbag and it is rather nice, it's very inoffensive, it's not gonna, blooming things go off again, it's not gonna offend anyone with, you know, it's not loud, it's not spicy, it's not too strong, it's just light, creamy, Thing. Does it say on the back? Oh, I've chucked the packet up and I, I think it's got jasmine in, a bit of musk, and it's definitely got vanilla. All that kind of, is it gourmand? How you pronounce it? 15 quid for that size. And I did something a bit silly. On the way out, I could have gone back and said something, I suppose. But on the way out, they had a deal and it was three for the price of two. So three for 30 quid. So a tenner each, or you bought two and you get one free. Why didn't I do that? I'll never know why. I could have bought three of these. One for the handbag, one for a present for someone, a giveaway. I'm going to be doing a giveaway at some point, And then another one for my delightful sister. It is what it is. But if I ever go back, I mean, I might have to go back, might not I? To go to the big Victoria's Secret, I might have to go back to Glasgow. That would work. The next things are, these are very sort of souvenir things, these little three items. My mother asked for a really simple, basic, um, not too garish or flamboyant, how can a magnet be flamboyant? Magnet for her fridge. And I bought one, then took it back because I saw this one and it was a fiver, it's so expensive. But look, it's a Scottish flag, Scottish flag. And I have to admit, she's, I bought two of them, she's had hers, and this is mine. For my fridge of the future, my future fridge in my future home. Not that I have a home at the moment, as you know. I'm bouncing around like a proper bohemian, what's the word, nomad, house-sitting. And the one I've given her, she's 
proudly displayed on her fridge and her mind will stay in its packet on its on its um, backing until I have my own fridge. I have a load of magnets to put up. When I went to Canada last year, I have loads from each city and Niagara Falls and all that jazz. And then I have a few from York. And then I have my little Scottish one. And I have loads from over the years from different countries I've visited. I, I started a few years ago purchasing magnets to almost as a way of displaying where I've been for nice memories. And I, it takes me back to, you know, certain things. But anyway, that is my little Scottish magnet. Now, I have a VW car, but it's not a Beetle and it's not baby blue. But how lovely is that? Look, a baby blue VW key ring. And that was really pricey. That was about, oh, I can't believe I'm saying it on here. It was about £7.50 for a key ring. £7.50. If you watched my vlog on Glasgow, um, I went to a place called the River Museum. It's sort of known as a transport museum around there as well with the locals and it's free but of course it has the obligatory gift shop full of the obligatory crap and essential items for tourists and people like wasting and spending money and I bought one for me one for my mother I bought my mother one in the color for her car which matches she has um, a beetle and then this one, I just thought, I have a blue car, but it's not this blue, but I love this blue. I'd love a mini in that blue. How gorgeous would that be? But anyway, I do love VW. I've always had VW cars apart from a Peugeot and I had a mini Volvo sort of hatchback as my first car. Anyway, I'm going with that. You don't need to know that. But I thought that was rather beautiful. So I bought, again, one for me, one for my charming mother. Then, oh, at the cat cafe. Oh, so lovely. I bought um, a magnet of my favourite cat, Bear. Look how handsome Bear is. Bear's like my dream cat. A big, fluffy, sort of creamy ginger boy who's got the fluffiest tummy, the fluffiest tail, the most gorgeous whiskers. And I would have kidnapped him. I would have gone out and had him under my um, coat. When we left the cat cafe, my, my sister actually joked and said, have you, how many kittens have you got under there, Sarah? And I was thinking, no, they were lovely, but I would I would kidnap Mr. Bear. I would have Bear as my pet, as my little little companion. So you never know if I move to Glasgow and Bear needs a home. You know, he'll always always have one with me. Next item, I went to see Anne Juliet, the musical. Now I've got a little story about this. You'll think it's hilarious. So dim. So I bought the CD soundtrack. And if you're a fan or were a fan of Max Martin music, Max Martin's this sort of supreme Swedish composer, songwriter, producer type of thing. He must have made an absolute bomb back in the day because he wrote lots of the tunes and melodies for the Backstreet Boys, NSYNC, um, Celine Dion, Britney Spears, um, Kesha or Keisha, how we pronounce her name, um, Katy Perry, um, Timberlake, um, what were they called? Is it Aerosmith who sings It's My Life? Da -da -da, or like that kind of thing. I'm not going to sing, I'm not going to just sing. <laughs> but he wrote all these fabulous songs. He's got various renditions of Baby One More Time and, you know, Backstreet's Back or Boy Band's Back. That's what they, what they call it. Um, oh, Protected, Show Me the Meaning of Being Lonely, um, Larger Than Life as long as you love me and all that kind of stuff. And we were so high in adrenaline after the show and they had closed up the concessions and where the merch is sold. And we're both like, oh my gosh, we can't leave without getting a CD. It's like going back to the nineties or the noughties. And we're like, we need a CD, not buy one and share it and record it. Oh no, we had to get one each. And the girl came running down the stairs like, I've got the last two for you. And we're like, wow, oh my gosh. And we said, how much? And she said, I'm not kidding, 25 quid. <laughs> and what do you do? And someone's come running, legging it down the stairs, nearly breaking their neck for you, and still like, <sighs> like this, you know, holding up the credit card machine and stuff. 25 quid we paid. We each bought a CD, 25 quid each. 25 quid a pop. 
CDs haven't been that much since they came out. They're like a penny in the C exchange shop. Anyway, went onto Amazon in the taxi on the way back and guess how much it was for sale. It was like 12 99 or something. So it is what it is. But my nephew could have easily copied that and then photocopied that and we could have just shared the cost of one. That's another option. But 25 quid I spent on that and have I opened it? Have I heck? But have I been listening to the soundtrack? Yes, I have on YouTube. So on my phone, driving to places, I just play it on YouTube. Oh, honestly, the logic, you know, I'm meant to be reasonably intelligent, aren't I? But that is the way it is. It is what it is. And I can't say fairer than that. Now, last but not least, just check the hair and that. I've got three items from Boots. So I turned up in Scotland without moisturiser, without a hairbrush or anything for my hair, apart from a little scrunchy. So I popped into Boots at Glasgow Station and I first of all bought, I was looking for the cheapest hair receptacle possible, cheapest hair tool, not receptacle, and I picked up a comb. That was something like one ninety nine. And oh, I shake my head with a brush. I don't want it all fluff up though. And don't, I'm so scared my phone, oh, it's really knotty my hair like that. You don't want to see that. <laughs> it's really knotty and messy and probably all sticky as well from baked beans I was eating earlier. Anyway, that's propped up. You're propped up on a cushion, so don't fall. And then I obviously have got not the best eyesight and I picked up what I thought was body lotion. <laughs> so coconut and jojoba oil shower gel to be fair in my defense there was like a skincare section and there are a few items on the end of the aisle and this was one of them Nivea and it was next to the skincare stuff like moisturizers and body lotions and hand lotions and I picked it up got back to the hotel was about to moisturize the old hands with it and then I saw care shower and it is what it is. The next day, I did actually have a tiny bit of moisturiser in another little tube. But the next day, I was like, why not add to the old Nivea collection, you know? So I popped out and I got a little hand cream. And this was a quid. It was literally a quid. I remember that. And so it's beeswax. It's, oh, my gosh. Yes, it's, it is beeswax. I didn't even think about that. That is definitely not vegan, is it? I think it's cruelty free. We're told that Nivea is Simple's cruelty free. I'm gonna have to check that, aren't I? If it's not cruelty free, I'm gonna have to repurchase Simple and give that to my delightful mother who will happily use it for something, maybe her horse. Anyway, just wanna update you on something. Actually, not update you. Well, first of all, I've got my op in a couple of weeks. I've done the pre-op at a hospital for my full hysterectomy and oh my gosh my weight oh dear I'm not gonna go into that it is what it is my height I'm slightly taller than I expected I'm just under 5'8 I thought I was more 5'7 but anyway that's something they asked me a lot a lot of questions and it appears I'm more active than I thought so when they were saying do you do moderate activity exercise how many times a day blah blah, blah and it wasn't that bad. It was better than it could be, but it still could be better, if that makes sense. Making a lot of sense, aren't I, as per? Anyway, so really quick little laugh here, my credit card situation. I, first of all, my debit card has been playing up. I can go to a machine and I can beep, beep, beep my numbers in and it'll tell me how much I've got. It'll tell me my funds, but will it let me take money out? Will it heck? Can I purchase things with it? No, why would I want to do that? So it doesn't work and I have not replaced it. And then my credit card, my last remaining functioning card, yesterday, I'm not gonna lie, I went to Greg's and I picked up a breakfast for myself, my delightful dog. For your information, I bought a omelette baguette, no, omelette bap, and I asked for sausage, but sausage in the bag on the side. So Daisy has sausages and I had the, the omelette and a latte. I normally, not that you need to know this, but I normally put my card in a particular place. I'm obsessed about it going in a certain pocket so I know where it is. We drove to our spot to devour the goods. And I thought, hang on, I don't remember placing the card in its home. Checked, of course it wasn't there. So we finished off our nibbles, had a little walk. 
as you do, drove back to Greg's, went and asked the staff, you know, had the card been handed in? Did I silly, stupidly leave my card here? It's the kind of thing I would do. They went, no, no, sorry. Then went on with my day and thought, oh, I really should keep looking. And I did keep looking. And you know when you obsessively look again and again and again in the same place? Then you go away for a bit and you think, no, it must, it must be there. It just must be there. So you go back and look again in the same place, doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. Definition of insanity. I know, I know. But I did keep doing that because I was convinced it must be there. And why would I forget my card? Why would I forget that? You know, sh surely you hold on to it, autopilot, and, you know. But it was not there. And I went the whole day without it, and I forgot to freeze it. Let's see where we're going with this. I froze the wrong card later on. Then when I thought about freezing, I freeze the debit card. And so the, the credit card was unfrozen for most of the day. Then I suddenly thought, um, so in the middle of work, I thought, I better freeze it. You never know. I can unfreeze it if I find it. So I finally thought to freeze it so that I used the card about, what time was it? About 10, no, I was working at 10, about 9 in the morning. By 4 p.m. I probably finally froze it. So you can imagine all the fun in that time someone could have had, potentially. I'll get to it in a sec. So then went through the rest of my day, didn't think anything of it. Had a tiny, tiny bit of cash to tide me over. And then I got home. And what, what did I do? I unfroze it. Yeah, so unfroze, this is two days ago though. So I unfroze it and I actually have my car details written down just in case I lose it. And if I want to still order something. So I ordered, I'm not gonna lie, cause I couldn't go out and get healthy food. And But I did order Domino's and some drinks and things like that. And I sort of did a bit of shopping on Domino's <laughs> to last me that evening and the next day the healthiest things I could find, okay? And I also ordered a Morrison's food shop to be delivered to my mother's house because I'm going there for a couple of nights and then when I go away, I thought I'd leave her with a few nice bits and bobs and, you know, be some stuff in the house for them, for her and then for when I get back as well. So I might stay with her next week for a couple of days. And so I did that and then I thought, oh, I'll wait till the purchases have gone through and then I'll actually report it missing and order a new card. So I did that. And that was on Friday. And then I, I am one of these obsessed people who, you know, since they found online banking is always on there, is obsessed with checking their balance. I pay off my credit card the second I bought something and I like it when it's gone to naught. So you know, it shows your balance, and it shows what you owe and all that kind of jazz. And I remember my balance that I owed was about something like 150 quid. And I thought, I'll, I'll balance the books on Sunday or whenever. And then I put some money in from my account. And I thought, that's strange that it hasn't, you know, it hasn't sorted the balance out. Because you come back in a few minutes later and it's, you know, it's the balance remaining is less because you've paid a bit of it off. And it, it doesn't tell you how much, but it shows you where you're at. So say you put 50 quid in, it'll take 50 quid off the balance and you've got 50 quid left. I'm sure you know this. But anyway, I didn't think anything of it. I thought, oh, maybe because I've reported it missing, it can't process that 50 quid or whatever I put it. Mine was 70 quid, actually. Anyway, I sort of left it, didn't think about it. But at midnight, I did check my purchases that were up to date. And it said where I'd been shopping the day before. It takes a while to update. Anyway, yesterday, Saturday, by now the card was blocked and I had um, ordered a new one. I'd ordered both new cards because the other one doesn't work. So I blocked both of them, reported them both missing, and I've ordered a new debit card and a new credit card. So I thought nothing of it. I did check my balance a few times and it wouldn't let me temporarily. And I thought, oh, that's just because they haven't given me a new card number yet. They haven't assigned me a new card. They haven't put, popped in the post or anything. And then I got back last night, still Saturday, and it, I got back about, I had a really long day. I did eight in the morning till 9 p.m. So 13 hours. Yeah, 13 hours actually. But they take half an hour break off of tight bastards. Don't get me started on that. Taking breaks off. Making your break unpaid. Oh, and then you don't even get the break sometimes. Anyway, not want to go into that positive place. <laughs> I do like my job, honestly. It's got a lot of good things about it. Very, very stress-free, which I need right now. Anyway, so then I got home and 
I got my cup of tea, had my shower, put my feet up. I was about to put that film on swimming pool or night swim, that's what it's called. It's, yeah, totally different films there. And I just checked my balance and it was suddenly at something like 230 quid owing. And I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, huh? I was like, if I put money in yesterday, it the balance should go down. Or at the very least, it should be the same as yesterday because I haven't bought anything else and everything's up to date. And I did have my car MOT the other day, but I paid that off immediately. And you can see on my on my um, statement that it's accepted that payment, so that's gone through. So it looks like someone, some little tyke, some little shite has had a bit of fun, a bit of mischief on my card, which is very interesting. Um, I didn't think it would ever happen to me because I hear it happening to everyone else. I was like, oh, that couldn't happen to me. No, no. the amount of times I've been careless with my card, nothing's happened. And I'm just, I just can't believe someone would dare to do that because imagine if you got hold of someone's card and you're a bit naughty and you want to have a bit of fun with it, wouldn't you be worried about getting caught or being on CCTV or, I know I'd be terrified, I wouldn't do that to anyone anyway, but I just would be terrified of being noticed or them going, you know, a, bloke, a, a young Chinese bloke or something, or an old, um, say an old, a, a, a gay couple, male couple, they go and buy something with my card and the person goes, which one of you Sarah? But actually you can't really say that these days, can you, because of all the, um, people identifying um, what they're identifying as or who they're identifying as. So they could be Sarah, I suppose, ignore that. But um, I was imagining them saying, which one of you Sarah? <laughs> you know, which one of you Sarah and Shops and Greg's? Because, oh, whatever. Do you know what I mean? So I, I just can't imagine how brazen someone is to steal someone's card and then to go shopping with it. And I'm, you know, part of me is, I'm not even outraged, I'm more like, really oh my gosh I feel so stupid that happened to me and in a way yeah how could someone do that why they want to do that but obviously money but lastly I think I'm a complete and utter nutcase I am sort of I'm anticipating I'm not even a shopaholic but I'm anticipating and very excited about seeing what they bought with my card I can't wait for the statement to update either tonight or tomorrow I'm just intrigued to see what they've bought and I want to know why they didn't spend more. And I want to know really why it took so long to update the balance because I did check a few times yesterday and it came up long after I'd blocked the card, cancelled it and reordered a new one. So I don't know how a delay, a delay like bills come through. And then it's like, did you really spend it yourself? And no, I didn't. I really didn't buy anything else. Because I think I would know if I'd spent, you know, sort of 180, 200 quid or extra or whatever. Very odd. But I, I really can't wait to hear and see what they've bought. And I will update you. I've been advised to ring up the credit card people and try and get my money back. But it just looks so dodgy from my part. It's like, why didn't you cancel it straight away? Why didn't you, or you block it straight away? And then why are you admitting because I would, I would have to say what I did buy, wouldn't I? Why are you, you're admitting you had pizza brought to one address and then you're admitting that you had a Morrison shop going to another address. So how can we, how do we know what you have and haven't purchased? I don't know how you prove it really, but um, it is what it is. And I've learned from my mistake. I've learned to block or freeze my cards straight away. The irony is my cards are normally blocked all the time. I block and unblock as I go to make purchases. So if I know if something's coming out, like an Amazon payment, then I'll unblock my credit card for that day. Or, you know, if it comes out early in the evening, late in the evening, sorry, that's when Amazon comes out, American Times, I think. But um, I blocked it. And of course, I, I'm now locked out of Amazon because the payment's pending. The irony, the whole thing. Anyway, it is what it is. I hope I haven't blabbered on too much. That's the first... You're the first people I've actually explained it to you. I texted my sister to let her know what happened and gave her a little essay as well, like this. But I haven't said it out loud to anyone. I feel such a fool <laughs> that someone's um, accessed my card and had a bit of fun. And also to kick myself thinking I could have gone and had a bit of fun with that money. You know, I'd rather I have a bit of fun or do something nice for someone else, take my mother out for a meal. But anyway, I'm really going on now, aren't I? It's like, stop. Thank you very, very much for watching my little video. 
I hope you see that I don't waste too much money on too much crap. I'm trying to be minimalist still. Got a few little items that are sensible. They're basically all perishable, aren't they? Apart from the souvenirs and the CD. So I'm quite pleased with my little collection. Though um, many things, many things I could have bought that I did think, oh, I like that. The one thing I regret not buying is this fabulous tea towel that was in Newcastle, near my hotel, down by the River Tain. That's a really bad accent. A Scottish and Geordie for me are very similar, or to my ear, but they had this tea towel and it had, I think I told you already, I think I've told so many people, it's basically all the um, Geordie dialect translations, so like town, tune, um, yes, I, um, darling, pet, and all that kind of thing. So it's translating, but I think I have told you that. Anyway, I really am blabbering now, aren't I? It's like, once, you st once I start, you can't stop me. Anyway, I've got a few hours left in this lovely home before I go off to work. And I think I'm gonna take the opportunity to watch another film. I don't know what I'm gonna watch yet. I really fancy watching um, World War Z because when I was in Glasgow, I saw some of the places they filmed it in and it's just on my mind. Anyway, having said that, I will try and find that now and get another cup of tea. Lovely to see you today. Hope you're all well. Take care of yourselves and of each other. And I hope you have a lovely week and enjoy the weather. <laughs> Bye.